Okay, this is uh, the second part of working with your calculator. We're going to be focusing on quadratic functions. So um, I want to give a brief, brief intro into quadratics. I know we've graphed a few quadratics. Like you already know, hopefully, that um, when you see this x squared term, that you should be getting a u-shaped parabola. Okay, so when we see a quadratic function, you should be getting a u-shaped parabola. Now, um, just like a... Uh, just like our absolute value function had an a term, we also have an a term here. In this case, if a is positive, it still opens up, and if a is negative, it opens down. So I want to open up um, this here and just kind of demonstrate to you what I, what I mean by that. So this is the a value in your standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Let me go back, actually. So ax squared plus bx plus c here. That's your standard form for a parabola. Um, you probably have been used to that when you were working with like the quadratic formula, and it's the same idea here. But now um, I'm going to manipulate the that function here. So I, here I have the mother function. If I increase that value, see how it gets skinnier? It's getting stretched vertically. Um, if I start to decrease that and make that negative, now it flips over the x-axis. So again, if it's positive and greater than 1, it becomes a stretch. Now if I input a value there, let's say uh, 2 thirds, now it's going to make that graph fatter. Oh, I don't know why it did that. I did not want that in there. Let's do 0.5 then. So negative 0.5. Okay, so now it's, it's a little bit fatter. If I just take out that point, that negative now flips back up. So that's a brief idea into, um, you know, quadratics. So we're going to use that when we try to graph something using our calculator. Okay, so we're going to start with this function, y equals negative 1 half x squared minus 6x plus 100. So there's a few things that we want to get started with. Well, first, we know that this is a parabola, and it's going to open downward, okay? Because of that negative sign here, we know that it opens downward. So it's going to roughly look like that. I'm going to wait to actually sketch this till I see where the x and the y-intercepts are. But I also know where the y-intercept is, because if I plug x into this function, I, this term drops out, right? 0 squared is 0, so that goes away. This term will also drop out, and it'll leave me with 100. So right away, I can actually fill in the y-intercept here. The y-intercept is going to be 0, 100. And that tells me something about what I want to view as far as um, in my calculator. So let's go ahead and type that in. So negative 1 half x squared minus 6x plus 100. Now I'm going to graph this um, in the standard um, viewing rectangle because I, I already have like an old window stored from before. So I'm going to go to zoom 6 just to show you what you probably would see if you had never um, adjusted your window at all. You're going to see this. Okay. Well clearly this is not the graph of a downward facing parabola. Now what you can kind of tell though is that the vertex is going to be somewhere over here because you're kind of seeing a slant like and I'm going to assume that this vertex is somewhere up here and the parabola looks like this. So I want to open this graph up and see a lot more, which means that I want to increase the y value because, again, the, the y-intercept was at 100. So I'm going to increase my window so that I have a y-max that's much larger, maybe to like 200 or 150. Let's try 150 for now. And then for the x-min and x-max, let's increase that. Um, let's do negative 30 to positive 30 and see how that goes. So when I graph this, oh, I must have hit 3 instead of 30. Let's go back to the window. Yeah, it's a, thir it's a 3. Okay, I'm going to increase that max to 30, and let's see if I can get a better picture. Okay, so this is actually a great picture. It doesn't have Yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine if you did not choose the same window that I chose. Um, the reason why I think this is a good picture is because, one, I can see the vertex of this parabola. I can also see both x-intercepts, and I can see the y-intercept. This is all the information that you need to be able to see. So I'm going to drag this screen into here. Or maybe I'm not. There it goes. Okay, and so that's the sketch. Where did it go? That's the sketch that I kind of want to copy. So when it asks you to sketch, just copy the same exact graph that you got from uh, your calculator, okay? And again, it should include, whoa, that's a pretty bad sketch. 
it should include all relevant information like your x-intercepts, your y-intercept, and then we're going to work on finding that vertex here. Okay? All right, so if I want to fill in some of this information, I can go ahead and fill in this here for the, the window. Um, the domain is going to be all reals because this moves from the left to the right. Now our range is going to be, since it's, like, let me go back to vertex here. Since this is a parabola that opens downward, this graph will have a maximum value, which means everything should be less than or equal to that maximum number. So what we need to do is figure out what that vertex is and then find the y-coordinate. That will be our, our maximum value, okay? When a parabola opens up, then of course then that becomes a minimum value, okay? So let's work on finding the actual vertex as well as finding the intercepts. The intercepts should be really straightforward. Since I can see both intercepts here when I go to calculate them, I shouldn't have a problem finding the zeros of the function. So left bound, right bound. Hit enter, scroll down, hit enter, don't guess, pops out 9.36 comma 0. So when x-intercept is at 9.360, my other x-intercept, second calc again, down to 0, left bound, come on. Okay, so I know I can't really see where it is on the left bound side of this, but I'm just going to hit enter because I noticed that the values here are below the, uh, the line y equals 0, so at least it's below that um, x-intercept. So I'm going to hit enter, and then scroll back up till I'm right bound, hit enter, enter again, and my other 0 is at negative 21.36. So negative 21.36 comma 0. Alright, now to find... Um, our y-intercept, we already found that. Um, that one's pretty easy, but again, you can hit second calc and then plug in the value 0. And that'll spit out 100 for me. Now I want to find the vertex. Okay, so finding the vertex is brand new for you. Um, you're going to also go to the calc button, second calc. This time, we're finding either a maximum or a minimum. Now in this case, since our graph opens down, that's a maximum. The vertex is a maximum of the function. So I'm going to hit 4. And when it asks me left bound, I want to be on the left side of that vertex. So I'm going to be on this side. Hit enter. Go to the right now for the right bound. Hit enter. And it's going to zoom in exactly that point. So our minimum, or I'm sorry, our maximum value is at negative 6, comma 118. When it says like point oh 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 two, um, assume that this is 6, negative 6. Um, Sometimes it spits out these kind of crazy numbers at you. Just assume that that's going to be as close to negative 6 as possible. So it is negative 6. So our vertex is at negative 6, 118. Okay? Now, that means our range then, since it's a maximum value, should be less than or equal to that y-coordinate, 118. So you need to make sure that you're looking at the y-value for that function. Okay? So that's how to find the max and min of your quadratic. Okay, next up, we're going to find specific y values and specific x values. Um, this is what your worksheet tomorrow is going to cover. So going back to your calculator here, if I want to know, in this case, if x is 37, what y equals, if I type in second calc value, just like I plugged in 0 before, this is an x equals, so I can just type in 37. Now, when I hit enter here, I get this error message. It's invalid. And the reason why, if I go back to my graph, come on. Okay, I got to quit out of that, sorry. If I go back to the graph here, remember, when I picked my range for my x min and x max, I did not, I went, I think I stopped at 30, so I can't actually see this right now. So I need to go back to my window and adjust so that I can see that um, when x is 37. So let's do, oops, let's do like 45. Hit graph. And now you can see where x is 37. However, I can't guarantee that I can see the y value. So let me show you now. If I try to do that se same thing, second calc value and type in 37, it'll probably still give me an error. Oh, it didn't. So in this case, I, uh, apparently I can um, see it even though it's the, the y value. I don't think my range goes that far. If I go back to my window, 
yeah, it didn't go down that low, but apparently if I can see the X, we're okay. So we ended up with, I don't even remember what that value was, so second calc value plug in 37, and we get negative 806.5. Okay, so negative 806.5. Okay, now we will also be asking you to use your calculator to find specific x values. Now this time it doesn't work the same way. There's no function that you can just type in a specific um, y value and then pop out an x value. Um, but what you can do is go to your y equals. And if I were to graph the line y equals negative 35, I should expect to get a horizontal line. Now when I do that, I see it cross. Oh, I can't see it because I'm not zoomed in enough. Let's go to window here, and let's um, go to, let's see, let's increase or decrease our, our max value here to like 50. So now hopefully I can see that line coming across. It's still thinking. It's still too small. Oh geez, I'm an idiot. Okay, it's actually, if we look at our window here, we need it decrease, it was negative 35, I thought it was y equals, if you go back to here, it's negative 35, I was thinking it was y equals 35. Anyways, let's go back to our window, and let's decrease the y min to, let's say, negative 50. Now I should be able to see this much better. There's the line, okay, so I'm not crazy. Alright, now I want to find what x equals when y is negative 35. Now because this is a parabola, when we have this quadratic, we are going to get two different x values. So we need to be able to find both of these x values. So what you're going to do is find the intersection of these two graphs. So after you plug in the y value into here and you go to graph it, you need to make sure you can see it. Now you're going to find the intersection. You're going to hit second, calc. Notice most of our buttons are in here. And then go to five, intersect. So second, calc, five. Um, when it asks you first curve, it just means which line, you know, or which um, function you're on. So right now I'm on the parabola, and then it's going to jump to the other curve, which is the line. Hit enter, and it's going to find the closest um, intersection point, which right there is 11.49 comma negative 35. Okay, so 11.49 and then negative 35 was one of the intersections. Now I want to find the other intersection, so I'm going to hit second calc intersect again, go down to 5, you can scroll down or just hit 5, I'll scroll down this time, whoops, one back, hit enter, when it asks you for the first curve, let's go all the way around, and then hit enter once I'm closer to this other intersection point, I keep going, there it is, so now my cursor is here, Let's get a little bit closer. I don't have to get that close, but let's hit enter here. And then when it asks for the second curve, hopefully you can tell, but it already jumped. Whoops. It already jumped onto the line, that horizontal line here. Just hit enter now. You don't need to guess. And there it's popping out your other intersection point at negative 23.449, negative 35. So negative 23.49. All right, so that's how you find the specific y and x values. This is something you're going to definitely need to know how to do. Make sure you're very comfortable with all of those keys. Alright, nice job. That's the end of the lesson.